All right, so, oh, wait, I meant to show you the picture. I get oh? distracted of, um, oh, I had it queued up, too. Oh, come on. Of Gage Park and the absolute mess that is going on there. And uh, garbage everywhere. I talked to one neighbor who said, I saw a guy, he urinated, on, not on her gate, but on the handle of her gate. Oh, come just on. To, just an extra, like, blank you. Yeah. And what are they doing? Our tax dollars are feeding them. Oops, I slipped Clothing the them. And there is, uh, look, you got to see this. See, look, hey, Amy. Such a, this, this, is, this isn't good on radio. Like, Oops, oh. I slipped and failed. My elbow somehow connected on his nose. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh you don't know how that happened. But look at all these cigarette buds. You gotta, I'm going to tweet this out. Yeah. Look at them. Look at that. Whoa. That's not snow on the ground, young man. Whoa. Those are cigarette buds by the thousands. Yes, more, probably more. It's just like if you're going to come here to this country. Yeah. This is care. Mother Earth. Where are all the environmentalists and you know screaming? Oh my! Yeah. Where's PETA? Because small animals are living under the ground that can't get out is because it... of all the garbage they leave in El Paso and in Lukeville, Arizona. What about all the flatulence? <laughs> isn't that flatulence? <laughs> isn't that causing big flatulence the air? Friday? No, you know, isn't that causing a lot of of, of problems with um, uh, climate change? With the, <laughs> the CO two levels. Oh, that's a lot of people. About? Yes. All right. So with more on this, we're going to welcome back to the program Chris Amatour. He is a Chicago property owner, and he is housing on his own dime 448. Oh, wait. Now 449 Whoa. illegals that are here. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Is Good. How you doing, Amy? Good. So uh, you had a baby, huh? Yeah, we had a baby, uh, <laughs> which was really great. We had the... Uh, Chicago Relief Program, uh, they helped us up. They, they have all of the migrants that I'm housing in their system, and they helped, um, you know, get to the hospital, have the baby, and it, 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 it was really special. You know, uh, the St. Christopher team and uh, Man and Chicago team were all there, and it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. So, Okay, so how many people are you? So is it, how is it going? Because you have 449 uh, migrants, illegals, whatever you want to call them, that are in your rental properties uh is everything going smoothly so far uh yeah everything's going smooth uh pretty smoothly i, I would say i mean the, the only thing that's not is that <laughs> i'm not getting any money for it yet or anything mm. uh because anyone that came after uh november 15th doesn't qualify for any rental assistance and then uh also anyone who came after july 15th doesn't qualify for any temporary uh work visas so I, I guess you could say everyone that that I help is people that cannot be helped, you know. So and there, and there were people that were literally on the street, uh, like they were people that were in excess from being getting into the shelters. And it was like two days before that that uh, you know cold snap we had mm -hmm. in uh, like when it was like negative fourteen. So I kind of made like a you know on the spot decision, and you know maybe it wasn't the best decision, but it's the, it's the decision I made and. Because, uh, I, I mean, I don't care what reason you say, Amy. Uh, I mean, I've heard it all. You know, I go to all, like, the city council meetings and everything. And, and everyone has every reason, you know. But to me, there's not one reason why you should let a, a child sleep in the street and starve. Yeah, you know, I don't care what the reason is. I mean, I probably agree with you that all these immigrant, all these migrants shouldn't be here. But w what are we going to do about that, you know? I mean, I mean, you well, know. We can I, vote the bums out of office. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that's for sure. Biden but in the meantime, can stop but this because like, he's oh. putting people's lives in jeopardy. I mean, people die every day. They drown in the Rio Grande. And if they're not, you know, sold into sex trafficking or raped along the way, it's not fair to them. What are pro and oh, yeah, I, I, AT&T provides proactive recommendations wait, so you on. get what's right that? for you. What? George, sorry, we had a mishap on the board. Um, So what, I mean, the people that came here, what what are you hearing from them? Are they grateful to you? Or they just think that they're entitled to all of this free stuff? No, the, there is no entitlement. And, and to tell you the truth, they don't even want any of this free stuff. You know, I mean, like, the, all they want to do is work. Like, if they could choose a, a, a condo with granite countertops for free or a tent down by the river and a job, they'll take the tent down by the river and a job in a heartbeat. I'm telling you, a lot of people have it. I mean, obviously, there's always going to be a 5% of, of any group in the world, you know, that are going to be the ones that you said are – pissing on the, you know, people's backyard or breaking into a garage or something. I mean, you're going to get that wherever, but you just can't stereotype the whole 
group of them just because some of them, which I know it's kind of hard because, you know, they're under the, under the, under the microscope and everything like that. But, uh, uh, but no, they're very grateful. Um, you know, like I had them all set up on Instacart where I, I, I was sending them food and they all told me to stop, you know, like they have other ways to get food. They're resourceful. And, and, uh, you know, and, uh, with the not-for-profit company, I started, uh, the St. Christopher Project, you know, I, I, I'm employing 60 migrants right now that are, uh, I mean, they're not all full-time because, you know, I, I just started this. And, uh, as of right now, I, I'm the only one funding it and everything. But, uh, but it, it, I mean, they work their tails off, and they're picking up garbage. You know, I mean, no one wants to do that job that currently lives in, in, in Chicago, not that I know of. You I know? pick up garbage and, all uh, the time on my block, all the time. And if the sewer sort of cover is, is got leaves in it, I get out my shovel and I move it and bag it and get it out. But So they're picking it. All right, let's talk about yesterday because Gage Park, again, people complaining that they're you know, drinking, doing drugs, staying out late, disrespecting the neighborhood, all those cigarette buds, all that garbage. How many people did it take and how many bags of garbage did you fill yesterday? Uh, yesterday we filled a... Uh, 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 over a hundred garbage bags, so about a hundred. I think it was like a hundred and twenty, about. Uh, but you know, we did everything. We didn't just do the park. Yeah, like, like if you go two blocks away from the park, we did all the alleys, the streets, and, and, and everything. Kind of like what you said, the areas that if it was your house, that you would clean the front of it and stuff like that. So I mean, a lot of that wasn't from the migrants, but we just cleaned it anyway because at city hall meeting two days ago that. There was like probably ten people from Gage Park that were there to complain about the shelter, which, and they have a very good reason to complain. Like they said, like there's a program for disabled people that they can't do now because the field house is being taken, and all this. And I agree. The last place that migrants should be is in a field house in the neighborhood, yeah. you know. And but like I said, uh, you know, uh, there's one thing that you could do is spread hate to, to make the situation worse, or you could have a solution. You know, and I'm trying to come up with a solution, you know, it, it you know, and, and maybe the solution is some of them need to be sent back, yeah. you know, and if we can't find them jobs, if we can't find them places to live. Yeah. yeah I mean, this cannot stay forever, you know, yeah. I, I, it in, still there, you know, Chris, I think it's admirable what you're doing, but I don't think it's hate um, that Americans are expressing. I think it's frustration with our government that we've allowed 10 million people into our country and some of them we don't even, and that's what we know. And and, and they're basically, look at, we, we didn't have money for our own veteran homeless people, but somehow we, we found this. We kicked veterans out right. of hotels in Massachusetts. Yes, but somehow we found money. And homeless shelters in Massachusetts for migrants. Right, somehow, somehow we found money for, 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 for this situation. I, and I listen, I, I can only imagine how much money you're losing um, by housing um, these illegal immigrants. I, I can only imagine. What, what, what's what been the police calls for service at, at, at your properties has it been a lot of police um activity oh no no i mean also our prop our block is the cleanest on in the whole neighborhood yeah you know because you know that's kind of a thing i have with them like hey if you're not paying rent every morning you're out here cleaning the street because you know the neighbors are going to be at least happy they have the cleanest block on the uh you know so that's good all, all 15 addresses you know and you know and and like i said and they also get paid to go out but they don't get paid for that though well, but, what about, uh, okay, yesterday, did anybody from inside the shelter help clean up their mess that they made? Uh, yeah, we, we did get, uh, um, you know, uh, about five of them that were out there, they came in. They just helped for free of charge, and then I got three others that we were able to uh, to get paid to help us for the day. But But we didn't really structure it where we were, like, trying to get them. You know, like, we got there, we started working right away picked up the 10,000 cigarette buds and all the all the trash in the field and then we kind of broke it up into like four zones where we just cleaned all all the all the neighborhood around there just to relieve some of the tension you know that I I felt at the you know city hall meeting um and uh but and also too uh Amy and Dana uh we have a a, a real cool program I'm too uh where if you go on our uh, uh x or twitter account you could go to our pinned uh, uh, post, and you could put a picture of anywhere in the city of Chicago 
and the address. And so all you got to do is post a picture and an address, and the St. Christopher Project will clean that area. So if there's, like, a really, like, annoying, let's say you're driving by work every day and you constantly see this vacant lot that's, like, covered with garbage, uh-huh. put a picture and an address on there, and then we'll reply to that with a picture of a clean. Okay, and what's, uh, what is the, what's the Twitter handle or the X handle? Yeah, that's uh, uh, at St. Chris Project, so, like, uh, S.T. Chris Project. Uh, so it, it, if you go on that, you could uh, – post a, a, a picture of that so it's kind of a good way to get the community involved and, and also to you know kind of i always call it you know the migrant opportunity i mean i understand it's the migrant crisis but uh you know i'm just trying to and, and everything you say are, are, are great points and everything but like i said all i see is the city of chicago i mean i work on the south uh, the south and west side every single day i'm on the street and and, and literally kind of like what you said dan is uh uh, or if it was Amy who said it, I forget. Uh, you know, when you say about like uh, the uh, the actual, uh, uh, like we were saying about the people in, in Massachusetts yeah. and everything mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, there's really nothing we could we could do about that. And like, but like, th- there was a perfect example. I was in an alderman's office, and I was waiting to see the alderman. And, and while I was waiting, I, I heard a homeless person that was in there talking with the alderman having a cup of coffee, discussing his options. You know, I would say he was experiencing homelessness. He was also a veteran, too. But, you know, I mean, my brother's a veteran. He went to Iraq. I'm a huge veteran supporter. I'm not trying to say anything about that. But the fact of the matter is he was able to go in and talk to an alderman and have a cup of coffee in a nice warm room and discuss his options of homelessness. And, and what program does he want to pick? Right. Now, put yourself in a migrant shoes. They have nothing. No alderman would even open the door to them to even come in there to talk to them. Mm. And they have Carlos no Romero Rosas would. You know? yes. hey, 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 Chris, uh, two things. First of all, my name is John. I'm not Dan. I'm better looking. He might be smarter, but I'm better looking. He's filling in for right. And, and, and don't and forget. And you have a better disposition. Correct. And don't forget. They're not homeless. They're unhoused, right? And oh, that's that right. you got to get the labels on, right. Chris. Come you better get Chris. it right. All right, Chris, um, thank you so much for joining us. If you guys have a dirty lot anywhere, uh, go to at St. Chris and take a picture and send it to him with an address. We got a text message. Amy, send him a picture of City Hall. There's plenty of garbage in there. Hey-oh. Oh, God. All right, Chris, thank you so much, and uh, we'll have you back. All right, have a good day. Okay, thanks. Chris um, Amator, he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line the stories you need to know to start your day this is chicago's morning answer on am 560 the answer there is a place in northern illinois that people have come from all around the globe seeking treasure it's amazing i didn't know what to expect but when i got there i was surrounded by all kinds of gold and silver an actual place where you're surrounded by treasure? I've known that gold and silver were a good investment, but I really didn't want to buy it through